be we come, O Lord, our God. participate in this holy sacrifice and now I ask that you please make an examination of your consciences for your penance I ask that you please, for the next three nights, besides offering your evening prayers, as well as your morning prayers, that you please take one of the three readings as prescribed by the church to reread, seeking the inspiration and the wisdom that is found through the Holy Spirit. And now, let us recite the second act of confession. I confess to Almighty God, one of the Holy Trinity, in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned in thought, word, and deed, by my fault, by my fault, by my own great fault. I ask the Blessed Mother Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon, absolution, and remission of our sins. Amen. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority vested in me by him, I absolve you of your sins. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. O God, you will again renew us. Amen. Show us your mercy, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Take our sins away from us, Lord, so that we might enter the Holy of Holies with purified hearts through Christ our Lord. From that time on, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer greatly from the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and on the third day be raised. For Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. 
Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Glory to who God is the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, Holy Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty Father, for the redemption of the world, you delivered your Son, Jesus, to betrayal and crucifixion. Take from us all self-assertion and willfulness and teach us the cost of true discipleship. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Jimmy, would you please proclaim the word? Please be seated. A reading from the book of Isaiah. The Lord God opens my ears that I may hear, and I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who... pluck my beard, my face I did not shield from buckets and spit. The Lord God is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint knowing that I shall not be put to shame. He is near who upholds my right. If anybody wishes to oppose me, let us appear together. Who disputes my right, let that man confront me. See the Lord God is my help, who will prove me wrong. The word of the Lord. Today is gradual, and you I trust. Let me not be put to shame, let not my enemies exult over me. No one who lays for you shall be put to shame. Those shall be put to shame who be put to A reading from the letter of James. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can that faith save him? If a brother or sister has nothing to wear, he has no food for the day. And one of you will say to them, Go in peace, keep warm, and eat well. But you do not give him the necessities of the body. What good is it? So also faith of itself, if it does not have work, is dead. Indeed, someone might say, You have faith, and I have works. Demonstrate your faith to me without works, and I will demonstrate my faith to you from my works. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. How long will you straddle the issue? If the Lord is God, follow him. Almighty and eternal God, who cleanse the lips of the prophet Isaiah with a burning coal, cleanse my heart and my lips through your gracious mercy, that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips, that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel. Amen.
The Lord be with you. And also A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. and his disciples set out for the villages of Caesarea Philippi. Along the way, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that I am? They said in reply, John the Baptist, others Elijah, still others one of the prophets. But he asked them, But who do you say that I am? Peter said to him in reply, You are the Christ. Then he warned them not to tell anyone about him. He began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer greatly and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed and rise after three days. He spoke this openly. Then Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. At this he turned around and looking at his disciples rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan. You are thinking not as God does, but as human beings do. He summoned the crowd with his disciples and said to them, Whoever wishes to come after me must deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake and that of the gospel will save it. The gospel of the Lord. Praise May the name of Jesus Christ be praised by all of us now and forevermore. Amen. Nick Benjo Pafaloni as a Sviscus. To you, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, in today's gospel, I believe that there are three parts to the Word of God as prescribed by the Church for this day. The first year that Jesus began his ministry, it was called the period of popularity. But like any good thing, people people began to question and to doubt because here was the son of Joseph even though he healed people people looked at Jesus as just an earthly human being so one day he asked his disciples, who do people say that I am? He wanted to fill the pulse of the people of his day. And some said John the Baptist, other Elijah, still others one of the prophets. And what is a prophet? 
Well, we see in the Old Testament God had sent spokesmen such as Isaiah and Jeremiah, the four major and the twelve minor prophets. And they came to speak on behalf of God and proclaim God's word. Not too many people knew that Jesus was the only begotten Son of God sent into the world to proclaim the good news. We teach that Jesus represented the perfect transparency and that if one was to look at Jesus, one would begin to understand the very mind of God. We read in the last gospel, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. But Jesus went a step further. He did not want to know other people's opinions, but he wanted to find out those that walked with him what they thought of him. So he asked them, Who do you say that I am? This story is repeated in the Gospel of Luke, and most importantly, it is also shared in Matthew, and later on we find that in Matthew, Jesus asks a similar question, who do people say that I am, and who do you say that I am? Peter, one of the first, outspoken, always answered, you are the Christ. But in the later account of this story, Jesus says to Peter, flesh nor blood has revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. When Jesus gave this statement back onto Peter, he realized that it was not through the logic or the human understanding that brought Peter to the understanding that Jesus was and is the Christ. And so the church asks all of us, in reference to Jesus, who do you say that I am? Because the answer we give is how our faith has grown. Peter saw Jesus and he heard that Jesus was like one of the great prophets. But the time that Peter made the statement, Thou art the Christ, Jesus, who understood people, knew that Peter was indeed enlightened to the truth. And we find that in one of St. Paul's epistles, that no one can declare that Jesus is the Son of God except God himself. And so, in, as I call the mosaic of our faith, the cornerstone of our faith, is asked by a simple question, who do you say that I am? It is a transformation of metamorphosis. It is something that 
when we first are asked, what do you think of the Christ? That as we grow in our understanding and we meet the Lord in our life, then he becomes more personal to us. How many of us can actually say that truly, without a doubt, that Jesus was the one sent by God to offer himself for the sins of men? You know, if we have an opportunity to look, there are many churches that have closed. There are many people who have turned away from the faith. And I think about Jesus in his Sermon of the Mount, who talks about a man or a woman who builds their faith in the sand. And those who build their faith upon the rock. Thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. You know, we, um, we are the ambassadors of Christ. We are the emissaries of Christ. You are the disciples. And even though there are some who do not attend church you are called to be the witnesses of the faith of the understanding that you have answered within your heart who is the Christ who is Jesus and it will be upon that faith that unshakable faith that is built upon the rock that you are sent into the world and it is by your words by your actions and your deeds that as disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ you bring Jesus unto other people the second part of today's gospel is where Jesus starts to talk about what is going to happen? Now, Peter and Andrew and James and John and Matthew and the other apostles were not in rabbinical studies. So they did, or could probably not, understand all of Scripture because you have to understand that there were no Bibles in the days of Jesus. There was oral tradition. And that those that came were taught mostly by word of mouth. It was only the learned that actually had a vast knowledge of the messianic prophecies pertaining to Jesus. And so we read in scripture in today's gospel that he began to teach them that the son of man must suffer greatly and we know peter who loved the lord began to rebuke jesus for what he was saying and what do we find as contained in today's gospel that Jesus turned around and he rebuked Peter. He said, you're not thinking like God does, but only as human beings do. The third part in today's gospel is where Jesus talks about discipleship. He said, whoever wishes to come after me must deny himself. How difficult it is in our world today to deny oneself. Most of society lives for the pleasure and for the excesses of life. We only need to look at the parable of the sower. But Jesus said to them directly, 
that you, that all of us, we must learn to deny ourselves because our reward is not here, but it is in our faith that we proclaim. It is in the faith that we believe that Jesus is the Christ that we begin to understand that Jesus coming to preach the good news came to speak of what it costs to follow Jesus. One must take up his cross and follow me. Now a cross, we understand in the days of Jesus, was an instrument of torture, and it was an instrument which people kind of shied away from. But Jesus says, you have to take up your cross and follow me. When you come to love the Lord, you are not given a free pass in which you will never, ever suffer or be persecuted or spoken against. But it is merely the fact of following the Lord when we answer that question within ourselves, when Jesus asked, who do you say that I am? Jesus came to prepare us for heaven. He came with the good news to bring salvation and redemption to each and every single one of us. And he says, dividing the kingdom of God and what we have here on earth. He says, whoever wishes to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake and that of the gospel will save it. And so in our reflections upon the word of God, it is the wish of those who continue to give God worship that we all grow in wisdom and understanding of not only Jesus being dedicated and giving his life unto God and for the sins of the world, but it is also the cornerstone of our faith by which we receive redemption according to our faith. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the name of Jesus Christ be praised by all of us, now and forevermore. Amen. Leaving, walk on God, the Father, the Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, no one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory, the judge, the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I acknowledge my baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. 
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Please be seated. and sisters, that our gifts of love and sacrifice may truly be accepted by God, our Heavenly Father. And the Lord accept the sacrifice from your hands, with the praise and glory of His name, for our ability to the Church. Amen. Let us pray. Mm -hmm. O Lord our God, accept the gifts of our, of your bounty. May we not walk the way of the cross, which leads to life and peace. We ask this through the same, Jesus Christ our Lord, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, all-powerful and ever-living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. You send unto us an advocate and a counselor in the person of the Holy Spirit to support us, to teach us, and to help to sanctify us. Through your Holy Spirit, O Lord, you give your gifts of grace in every time and season as a guide for your church. And so therefore, as we gather this day, we join with the voices of angels and archangels along with all the saints and the entire church. And we lift our hymn of praise to your glory, repeating unceasingly, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, O Son of the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, O Son of the highest. Please be seated.
most merciful Father, we most humbly pray and ask you through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, to accept and to bless these gifts, these presents, these holy and spotless sacrifices, which we offer to you in the first place for your holy Catholic Church, that you would guide it in peace, defense, and unity throughout the whole world with its bishops and priests, especially Anthony, our prime bishop, and Paul, our bishop, and all who profess the true Orthodox and Catholic faith, which comes to us from the apostles. Remember your servants, O Lord. May we remember those in our world who are sick, suffering, and dying. May we pray for the hungry, the homeless, and the unemployed. May we pray this day for world peace. May we offer our prayers for all abused and neglected children, as well as all abused and neglected animals, and all victims of violence both here and abroad. May we give God our thanks for the blessings of all those who serve in our armed forces. And Father, may we also remember all who are gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you, for whom we offer or who offer up to you the sacrifice of praise for themselves and all their own, for the hope of salvation and deliverance, and who freely choose to serve you, the living, eternal, and true God. We join in communion with and honor above all others the memory of Mary, the glorious Virgin Mother of our Lord and God, Jesus Christ. Also your blessed apostles, martyrs, and confessors, together with all the countless number of saintly men and women of all nations, but especially of our nation who lived, suffered, and died for the glory of your name and the coming of your kingdom. May the remembrance of these praiseworthy people encourage us to follow their heroic example, making us worthy of your grace and love through the same Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We ask you, Lord, to graciously accept our offering of that of your whole family, and so order our days in your peace, that we may be saved from spiritual damnation and counted among the flock of your chosen people through Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, we ask you to bless, to accept, and to confirm this offering and make it pleasing to yourself so that it may be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit and become for us the body and the blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. The day before his suffering and death, in order to manifest his infinite love to his disciples and through them to all who would believe in him, to fill the hearts of his followers with the fire of this love, draw them to himself, make them joyful and save them, he instituted these holy mysteries in which spiritually and bodily in his entire being, he again lives among his people. At that solemn moment, so sacred for the whole human family, our Savior took bread into his holy and venerable hands. Again, giving thanks to you, he blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which is given for you. like manner after supper, taking this excellent chalice into his holy and venerable hands, again giving thanks to you. He blessed it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Therefore, in remembrance of this Christ, your Son, our Lord, 
and his blessed passion resurrection and his glorious ascension we your servants and faithful people offer to your divine majesty from your own gifts and presence a pure offering a holy offering an immaculate offering the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation be pleased to regard these offerings with favor and joy and accept them as you receive the gifts of your just servant Abel, the sacrifice of our patriarch Abraham, and that which a high priest Melchizedek offered you a holy sacrifice in immaculate host. We humbly ask you, Almighty God, to command that this offering be brought by the hands of your holy angel to your high altar into the presence of your divine majesty that we who receive the most sacred body and blood of your Son may be filled with every blessing and grace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> Lord, remember your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and who now sleep in peace. To these souls, Lord, and all who rest in Christ, Grant, we pray, a place of refreshment to light and peace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. And grant us, your sinful servants, who hope in the greatness of your mercy, some part in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs and all your saints who shed their blood for your name. Their hearts were always open to justice and mercy, and with lives patterned after their divine master, merited eternal joy. Numbers of their company, Lord, not weighing our merits, but parting our offenses. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. By whom you always create, sanctify, revive, bless, and freely give us all these good things. Through him, with him, in him, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, in the unity with the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray, instructed by our Savior's teaching uh, and following the divine example, we say with confidence, Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity with the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. Mingling and consecration of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Help us who receive it to everlasting life. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. 
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Do not look at our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, for you live forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free us from all our sins and from every evil. Keep us faithful to your teaching and never let us be parted from you, who lives and reigns God forever and ever. Amen. May the partaking of your body and blood, Lord Jesus, not be cause for our judgment or condemnation, Though we are unworthy to receive this great sacrament, through your loving kindness, may become our safeguard and healing remedy. Our saving master, awaken in all of us a living faith, fervent love, worship, adoration, and a holy longing. Through this communion, make us your willing servants, zealous to fulfill your holy will. May it at last unite us entirely with you, our Lord and our God. Grant us who lives and reigns with God the Father, in unity with the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, for those of you who will not be able to receive the Eucharist, let us now offer an act of spiritual communion. Let us pray. Most loving Jesus, I adore you in the most blessed sacrament in which you are truly present. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart and heal my soul. I embrace you and unite myself with you. May I never be separated from you. Inflame my heart with the fire of your love, my Lord and Savior. Amen. We will take the bread of heaven. And we will call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. May the body of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. What shall I return unto the Lord for all the graces he hath rendered unto me? I will take the chalice of salvation, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. With high praise will I call upon him, and I shall be saved from all my enemies. May the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Lord, Lord I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. Receive the Lord.
disciple is above, above his teacher. No slave above his master. It is enough for the disciple that he become like his teacher, for the slave that he become like his master. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, having received your holy mysteries, may we draw closer to you and to one another. Help us in all we do, so that, bearing our cross, we may always further your kingdom. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. of our worship be pleasing to you, most holy trinity. Grant that the sacrifice which we, though unworthy, have offered up into the sight of your majesty be acceptable to you. Through your mercy may be effective for ourselves and for all those for whom we have offered it. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. May the almighty and merciful God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory be to you, Lord. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was in God's presence, and the Word was God. He was present to God in the beginning. Through Him all things came into being, and apart from Him nothing came to be. Whatever came to be in Him found the life, life of the light of men. The light shines on in the darkness, a darkness that did not overcome it. There was a man named John sent by God who came as a witness to testify to the light so that through him all might believe, but only to testify to the light, for he himself was not the light. The real light, which gives light to every man, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and through him the world was made, yet the world did not know who he was. To his own he came, yet his own did not accept him. Any who did accept him be empowered to become children of God. These are they who believe in his name, who were begotten not by blood, nor by cardinal desire, nor by man's willing it, but by God. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory of an only Son coming from the Father, filled with enduring love.